If you're a fan of old school bodybuilding, then make sure to check out Subs the Movie. Filmmaker Alex Ardenti explores the $40 billion sports supplement industry, delving into the origins, evolution, and current state of supplements used by millions of fitness enthusiasts worldwide, available at Amazon and Vimeo. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookham here, and today I thought I would uh, go through my gym and actually do a video that I've been asked a couple of times, and that is... um. How to actually make your own perfect home gym should you want to train at home. I know a lot of people um, have the space and wish to train, train at home for several reasons. Many don't like going to commercial gyms, I understand personally. So let's get straight into it as to what kind of equipment you want to have if you're training in a home uh, gym. The very least, the very least you want to have is some kind of a power rack or half rack. If you can't afford a power rack, or the, the space for a power rack is, is, demands too much space in your own place, um, at least a half rack. A half rack essentially would be this part of the power rack, two actual stands, and probably this kind of part down here, right? With the, with the, um, where you can actually bench off or have the squats down here, etc. right? Um, have these, this safety area here, the safety bar. Um, a half rack allows you to do, you'll see them online, as I said, they're basically just half of this power rack chopped kind of diagonally, right? Um, and they allow you to do squats because the stands, basically there's two vertical stands with kind of an L or this kind of a rectangular shape at the bottom. Um, you would have, it, it, the actual hooks are rather adjustable, so you can actually have them at the height of around your shoulders for squatting. Um, and you can also put the hooks all the way down for bench pressing, right? Uh, you can also, of course, um, have them approximately where your overhead pressing uh, strength would be if you're seated, for example. So it allows, a half rack at the very least, allows for a lot of these compound power movements. So you want to, at the very least, have a, power, uh, a half rack. If you can afford and have the space for a power rack, even better. It's going to be a lot more flexible and even safer because um, you'll have at least these um, kind of safety bars that are also adjustable so that if you get caught in the bench press you just leave the bar, the, the safety bars usually set an inch or two under your maximum range of motion and then all you got to do is roll the bar off you and it's fine. I always like having a power rack, it's the best. Same with the squat, as you're squatting, the safety bars can catch you if you're not doing the squat properly, if your brake forms down, if you just can't do any more reps, etc. That's what the safety racks are for. And the power rack allows you that, right? You want to have that. You want to also have, uh, well, besides, I want to talk about the barbell and the, and the weights, of course, and a bench. They're the basic three things you want. A rack, a bench, ideally, and a barbell with weights. I mean, I know there's some people online you're seeing that at the very bare minimum have a bar and weights, and that works too. That works too. If, if uh, I know that Nathan, for example, from uh, Atlas Power Shop, just uses a bar and bumper plates. That works too. If you really want to go all raw, you can. But for safety reasons and the ability to do, um, I guess, more conventional movements. I mean, Nathan, for example, from Atlas Power Shrug, specializes in a lot of bronze era movements, a lot of the really um, turn of the century, uh, what you call odd lifts and things like that, that aren't necessarily um, practiced by the majority of people nowadays. Most people like having the, 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 the um, convenience of a half rack or a power rack. That's why I started with that first, safety first. Um, the advantage, of course, of having a power rack is that you can expand once you have a power rack. Because it's got all those holes uh, for settings for different things, you can attach, for example, dip bars. I've got a set over here that allows me to do dips. Um, you, some, some power racks allow you to even attach a lat tower, a lat pull-down tower like this one. So I can actually do triceps press downs, cable curls from the bottom, seated cable rows, lat pull downs, all kinds of um, different 
uh, exercises, painful exercises, uh, single arm, uh, lat raises, etc. Anything that I want to do, I can. Um, because it comes with this lat uh, pull down attachment, I can now perform cable exercises. Another advantage of the power rack is that usually they come now standard with a pull down station. Now, mine was a very simple bar. I don't have the answer over there. It was just a bar. Unfortunately, the construction wasn't a very good construction. It was hollow. And once I exceeded my own body weight and started attaching um, weights using my, um, my weight belt, it just started bending. So I got it out and adjusted my rack by drilling a few holes in it and then purchasing this wonderful high quality um, uh, you know, this is a pull-up station um, from Cross Equip, which in here in Switzerland is the is a very good company. Uh, I buy some of my equipment uh, from them, and that was just like seventy bucks. So, you know, it allows me to do all kinds of gripped um, uh, pull-ups and chin-ups and neutral grip, uh, supinated, pronated, etc. So that's the advantage basically of having a parrot. I'm not going to go through every single attachment that you could put in a parrot, but it does give you, you know, some some have uh, attachment areas. For example, for landmines to do T-bar rows and all sorts of things. So, a power rack really opens up a whole uh, range of different uh, possibilities for your own home gym. But at the very, very least, at least I think, uh, for safety's sake, you should definitely have a power rack or a half rack. Um, as I mentioned, number two, most important thing really out of everything you can own, even if you can't have a power rack. If you can't have a bench, get yourself a good bar. And I'm not talking about a standard uh, one inch thick bar. I'm talking about one and a half inch Olympic barbell, right? Like this one with revolving sleeves. Yeah, they cost 200, even, even more bucks. Who cares? You know, you pay way more for a gym fee. So get yourself an Olympic barbell and it's gonna last you most likely a lifetime, a good quality one, I got mine. In Australia about 10 years ago and it's still good right? it's only you using it so you may as well invest in, in something that's going to be high quality and it's going to last your lifetime and the wonderful thing about an Olympic barbell is that weights are standardized to it which brings me to the next point you can get yourself Olympic barbell weights right so the issue with standard Standard barbells is that they're not standard. They're standard maybe to a company, um, but some of the weights might fit them, and then you might find that with a different barbell because it's a slight difference. It doesn't fit there. Uh, you know, those weights don't fit on that barbell, etc. And it's just a mess, right? Um, yeah, they're fun to have, and I've got a, a whole lot of them that I've collected over the years uh, from people that just chucked them out or because I actually specifically wanted them. But the beautiful, beautiful thing about an Olympic barbell is that it is standardized worldwide. Right? So are the bumper plates, more or less, or the Olympic plates that go with it. So it's a great piece of equipment to have. Right? With this, you can do every compound movement you can think of. Deadlifts, squats, presses of all kinds, and triceps extensions, curls, you name it, you can do it all. Right? Or at least most compound barbell exercises you will be able to do because they're barbell exercises and you bought yourself a good barbell, right? Um, yeah, so that's really, really important. And as I said, Olympic barbell weights. Um, if you're gonna buy yourself a set of weights, get yourself, I would say, four 1.25 kilogram weights, which are two and a half pounds approximately. we get four of these. I would get two, two and a half kilogram or two, five pounders approximately um, of the Olympic barbell weights. And then I get at least two, five kilogram weights, two, 10 kilogram weights, uh, and then two 20s to start with, two 20 kilogram weights. That's gonna give you, you know, if I do the math, I don't know, but I can't do it that fast, but it's gonna give you about so I would say almost, uh, I don't know, let's just do the math. Um, you can actually get yourself maybe two 15s too as well. 
So 2 by 20 is 40, 2 by 15 is 30, that's 70 kilos, 2 by 10 is 90, 2 by 5, 100, you're going to get well over 100 kilos. And I also said at least 2, 2 and a half, 105, and at least 4, 1.25, so that's another 5. That's 110 kilos total, 110 kilos, with of course um, some locks for your bar block, right? couple of locks. There's many different types available. Some are uh, these spring collars, I should say, these collars and locks, whatever. Um, you can get them, like the one I just showed you, made out of plastic, or you can get the, uh, let me just get one out, a good old fashioned metal spring collar as well. They all work pretty well. You know, get yourself some weights, some Olympic weights and an Olympic barbell, and that's the absolute minimum, right? For safety for safety's sake, a good power rack or half rack. Bench. Okay, a bench. I would recommend if you're gonna buy just one bench, to buy a bench that is an incline slash decline adjustable bench. You want to have an adjustable bench. I mean, it's great to have a flat bench. I've got one, but I don't actually have the space to hold it here, so it's in storage. But I use my adjustable incline bench that allows me to perform flat bench exercises, decline as far as I want, and incline. Right, all the way up to normal seated position, and that's the wonderful thing about adjustable benches nowadays. Right, um, it allows you pretty much to do everything you need in all sorts of angles. Right, some like this one that I got, lucky me, even allow the seat to be adjustable. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't go down, but it does. Find the actual areas. The knob. It allows to go in all these different um, in two or three different settings. So that first setting is like maybe 15 degrees, 30, 30 degrees, and then that's it. I think 40. There are a few stops you can see. I don't know. There's about one, two, three. Four different settings, right? So they allow you to do a lot, a lot of different things. It's fantastic, right? Um, I mean, now that I think about it, I could almost do hyper extensions with this. I have to try it out. I've never actually tried a hyper extension here. I've been looking at a way of doing them, and maybe this is a solution. <laughs> um, might be, might be actually, if I can think about it. Anyway, um, but yeah, like this is the wonderful thing about having an adjustable bench. You can do all sorts. You can you can set it up in all sorts of different variations and allow yourself to do, of course, a variation of exercises. These to me are the absolute bare minimum for a good gym setup. Repeating a rack, half or full power rack, Olympic barbell with Olympic weights, like I already said, a, a set of 110 kilos and an adjustable bench, absolute bare minimum. Now, speaking of other weights, I mean, you know, I would highly recommend if you really want to then take it to another level, this is like the other level. Right? You could say that there's three levels of, of uh, categories if you want to go spending wise and, and accumulating and, and growing your gym further and further. The absolute bare minimum, as I said, and I'll say it again, is the weight that you need to use with a barbell. So the Olympic uh, weight with an Olympic barbell. Now, for a variety of exercises that you can do safely, you want to use. The, you can upgrade then from from just weights to a bench with a rack. Now you've got a really good gym. You've got a great gym doing the majority, of course, of barbell exercises. Now that's like second level. Third level would be to have adjustable dumbbells, right? Now, nowadays you have the convenience of companies like Ironmaster, I think it's called Ironmaster, um, 
power tech and many others i don't know them they don't sponsor me i don't know them um, that actually provides you a full solution in a set of dumbbells and they go up to some some go up to like 50 kilos or 100 and something pounds all the way from five pounds to 100 pounds or more uh, and i mean if you're using um you know 100 pounds then yeah, I mean, I'd say you're almost a pro bodybuilder, you know, um, especially if you're doing benches and, and, and rows with that kind of weight. Yeah, sure, you're, you're definitely at a very high level. But for those that want to, that are just beginners to intermediate, these adjustable dumbbells that go, as I said, to about 50, uh, to, to about 50 kilos or, or 100 and something pounds are more than enough. They're going to be enough for years, right? And they save you the space. I've got, and I'll show you now, as you can see, I've got um, a full set of dumbbells that go from five pounds all the way up to 100 pounds. And you can see how much space it actually takes. This is about two meters long, along with a good half meter tower here. Now, of course, I've, I'm lucky to have the space, but not everybody has the space or the money to afford an enormous set of dumbbells. Now, mind you, you can see they're all old. Many of these were gifted. Others um, I purchased in batches. And I mean, I've even made my own like these and some of those down there, right? Uh, point being that you need space, you need money if you want to have all this, right? I'm lucky that this probably only spent me, uh, this only probably cost me, you know, without exaggeration, no more than 500 bucks, right? I bought, the only thing that's new here is actually this dumbbell tower. Everything else is second hand and I bought for just a few bucks, right? Um, so all I can say is that um, it's easier to avoid this by purchasing what I mentioned before, PowerTech, iMaster, and all those other companies that sell um, the, I think, there's, there's another one called a new 32 or something new belt the new belt that's a good one um, that goes to 32 kilos and it goes to 40 something as well um, yeah there's a lot of these different companies that sell adjustable dumbbells and it's just one set and all you got to do is turn the dial and click you've got the setting for five kilos or for 10 kilos for 20 or whatever and it's just a piece of cake within seconds you've got all the dumbbells you need right and and i would say it's you know if i hadn't done this because when but because when i started my gym uh, you know years ago we're talking 15 years ago right when i started all this there wasn't that stuff available so i wasn't going to sell it I, i'm obviously attached to my weights but um if i would have known like i think they all came out about five ten years ago um, i would have saved myself some space and bought myself adjustable dumbbells um, those ones that are now available and and saved all the space and done something else with it put some different machines in here and god knows what but i would say if you're going to then go from you've got your bench you've got a power cage you've got your set of weights with your barbell and you really want to upgrade to that next level to now include dumbbells uh, dumbbell workouts dumbbell exercises in your workouts then buy yourself a good set of adjustable dumbbells. And that pretty much is all you really need for a good home gym. Simple. Now I'm just gonna go around my gym and show you the other things I've got that I think really add to the, to the variety and to the gym itself um, environment that makes it even better. As you can see, I've got um, lots of different attachments that go with my lat tower here, right? There it is. And you can see down the bottom, I've got different kinds of pull down attachments. And I've got even rings here because I, I really enjoy using many of the Vince Gironda exercises. I found these gymnastic rings. I made my own long Vince Gironda triceps rope. Um, I found through Daryl Conant the original leather straps that are used and I found these Vinster on the like attachments online as well uh, lat pull downs etc all available online 
Um, if you have a lat tower, of course, you can get yourself attachments based on what you really need and what you do. And that's the beauty of it. You can always add to your own gym and it lasts you forever. Um, you know, what else can I say? Like, I've got, as you guys know, a lot of cool posters. Is it necessary for a gym? Absolutely not. But, I mean, it motivates me when I'm working out. I see the kind of physiques that motivate me. And of course, if you're interested in, in getting uh, bodybuilding posters, uh, you can go to ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com where um, we sell their high quality, and I, and I do say this, the highest quality bodybuilding posters on the planet, bar none. You're going to get the original, origin, these are based, these posters are based on the original negatives from the best photographers in the world that I've been working with and we all started this web page uh, for fans of old school bodybuilding and you can get the most crisp, crystal clear photos on photo paper, posters also on photo paper. It's not that crappy paper quality. You want, you have your own home gym and want to put some motivation up, get yourself some golden era posters. Um, now that was my own adver advertisement, if you will. I would also recommend, of course, if you're doing um, heavy weight training, a good weight belt. There's many available. Here's a great one from NSP Nutrition, available from their website. They, they now sell gym gear. Uh, so this is a really, really good, uh, I found it's very comfortable and high quality material from NSP Nutrition. They have other gym equipment available too. Talking about more variety, you can always get yourself a variety of barbells. You can see here, I've got a cambered bar, or yoke bar as they call them, for performing um, safety squats as they call them. You can see I've got a triceps bar. All, these are all Olympic, by the way, Olympic barbells. And I've also got myself uh, there an easy curl bar plus other barbells lying around. Um, I don't know if you can see it there, but I've got my own T-bar row with T-bar handle at the bottom. All again, this stuff, is just going to give me more variety. I've got, um, what is it called, a TR, XTR, or whatever system over there as well. That there's basically, it's based on the a gymnastic ring system. Okay, as you can see it. Um, yeah, I mean, what else? There's, of course, machines. Machines, which truly, um, for, see the car phrase you've got here? See the shoulder press station? and my Powertech leg press machine. Is it necessary? Absolutely not. Is it nice? Hell yeah. <laughs> I love this stuff, right? These are from Australia. You know, the, the seated car phrase and the, and the seated uh, shoulder press station. I've got them like for 50 bucks each, so I'm not gonna let them go, and they're, and they're pure steel, but they are absolutely not necessary. You can perform seated car phrases using a barbell padded on an incline bench like the one I just showed you, right, at the edge of it. Um, you can set up an incline bench to perform seated uh, uh, seated uh, shoulder presses. Of course, you, it's very difficult to perform leg presses, although it is possible, as shown by um, athletes such as uh, Nathan from Atlas Power Shrug, who does his leg presses on his back. <laughs> you know, he claims it's safe, but uh, I've got my own opinions, of course. Um, but of course, um, you know, what I'm getting at is machines do make many of these other um, exercises which add variety to our workouts safer. You do need a lot of space for them. And even though the PowerTech leg press, the compact leg press is leg is very compact. It is. Still, um, you can get away with doing hack squats, front uh, squats, lunges and god knows all these different kinds of of exercises delling squats sissy squats i could just go on and on there's, there's hundreds by vince Gir oh, hundreds but 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 many from vince Gironda and many other great trainers um, that are barbell dumbbell based uh, exercises for your legs they don't need you don't need a leg press you can develop wonderful legs without them um, but yeah of course if you have if you have the space Sure, 
And going on that note now, going on that note, I want to say something very important. I think it's important to state at this, uh, it's important to stay at this state uh, of the video, I'm about to finish now, is in that having given you the basics, you know, at the very basic, a barbell as a recommendation with weights as your absolute basics for your home gym, and then growing with a rack, bench, right, adjustable bench, and then growing from there with adjustable dumbbells, right? And then if you want further, lat tower, pull-up station, attachments for your lat tower, for cable exercises. Um, what else? <laughs> Different barbells, machines. You've seen my, my small gym, right? Uh, one of the questions I get is, you know, uh, or, or, or statements I get is, um, or complaints even, this costs so much money. Yeah, it, it can cost you a lot of money if you buy everything brand new. Did I buy everything brand new here? No. I would say that 10% of the things here are brand new and maybe 5% I paid full price, right? Some things were gifted, other things I bought secondhand. And this is the wonderful thing now about being, you know, being in the internet online age, you know, you have websites everywhere that are selling secondhand everything, right? You don't need to pay full price, but I do caution here with a word of warning. There are many thieves out there that will uh, place an ad, you pay them, and then they don't send you anything. So it's always good to Deal with technology with a bit of common sense. I've learned the hard way. I've actually been scammed a few times. And um, you can end up losing hundreds, if not more. I've lost hundreds at time. Um, and I think the best thing to do to, to recommend you there is, um, sure, you can find some great pieces of equipment online, power racks, barbells, benches, weights, machines, the works, right? If you find out, if you find something that you like and it's half price or even a fraction of the price, usually that's what it costs because people buy these things brand new, they use them for a couple of months, it stays in their storage and then they go, oh hell, I'm never going to do this again, I don't even know why I started, so I'll just sell it, right? And that's where, where you can get yourself a good deal. But use common sense, shop locally, which means you can go pick up that piece of equipment and save on postage. That's a double advantage. And you can pay cash in hand. Pay cash in hand, which means that you can actually go there, inspect the actual equipment, and pick it up yourself. There, there is no chance of being scammed, right? So that's my recommendation. If you're going to buy anything secondhand, go in person, pay in cash, pick it up yourself. You're going to also be able to bargain with the guy. Maybe he's got other things and go, look, uh, you know, I'll, and maybe he just wants to get rid of it all. And that's happened to me. I've gone, for example, I'll tell you a story. Once I went to a toy sale around here and I went with my kids and in a corner they had all this gym equipment. They had a different kind of power rack, which I have in storage. Um, they had oh, <laughs> that whole stack there of bumper plates, some dumbbells and God knows what else, right? And I just took a couple of sets of bumper plates because that's all I needed. And the guy said, is that all you want? You, you look like you're training, you know, you look strong, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's all I need. You don't want more weights? I'm like, no. And he goes, just, just wait a minute. He ran off, came back with his, his boss. And the boss is like, hmm, you look like you work out. You don't want to take all this stuff? No, I've got all my equipment. I'm fine. I kept, they kept pushing me and I said, I don't want it. I just want four weights. Uh, four, four bumper plates. It's like, look, we are desperate to get rid of this stuff. And the four weights were going to cost me, uh, they, they were just 10 bucks each. And I was only going to pay 40 bucks. Right? And he goes, we'll give you the power rack, this whole tower of, of um, bumper plates, those dumbbells, and all this other stuff for 100 bucks. <laughs> What? A hundred bucks? I didn't even think twice. I took the whole load. And that's the wonderful thing about going in person and picking a bargain up. Sometimes they might have other things 
that you may not necessarily have thought of or want at the time, but you end up getting an awesome bargain by, by just paying a little bit more. I mean, these are the wonderful things that can happen. Or the guy might just decide, are oh, you getting my barber? Oh, look, I'll just throw in some weights with that. Or, or do you want this bench or whatever? And sometimes you get extra. So that's just a little tip in buying things, you know, online. Um, uh, sorry, yeah, in person that you found online. So um, you don't need to pay full price. You can uh, always get a bargain. That's it. That's all I've got to say regarding uh, building your own home gym. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Leave me a comment. And thanks for watching. That's it. Uh, yeah. This is Golden Era Bookham saying bye for now. And, you know, get strong with your own home gym if you can. As a natural bodybuilder, it is imperative to know your own testosterone levels as they are a reflection of the anabolic environment created by your diet and training. I would highly recommend using the male hormone test kit from Let's Get Checked and make sure you use my code GOLDEN30 for a 30% discount. Again, the advantage of checking yourself regularly is that you will know how well your body is anabolically primed to put on the much desired muscle you are working for. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Vince Deronda's approach to bodybuilding, his principles, and all these tips of wisdom that he has, I mean, there's so much stuff that probably hasn't been proven by science, and it will take science to prove or disprove uh, Vince. But to be honest, these three books, I believe, which I call the classic physique bundle, are the best books that Vince ever came out with. And they, of course, are the Wild Physique, the Master Series, and the Pro Series. Have a look at it this way. The Wild Physique, I believe, is like the ABCs of Vince Deronda's principles to bodybuilding. He teaches you the exercises and his principles. But how do you put them together? Well, the Master Series is a 14-month program of using all of these principles, all of the diets that Vince came out with, all of the exercises. And believe me, it's a brilliant, brilliant program. Many people have used it. I know I know personally a lot of our bodybuilders that have actually used it and uh, f made fantastic results with it. And of course, the Pro Series was a book that he came out with later on, specially targeted for uh, getting into competition. It's just these, these three books, as I call it, the Classic Physique Bundle, uh, Vince's best work, and available, of course, at www.goldenerabookum.com. Now, the Pro Series of Bodybuilding, which was targeted for professional bodybuilders, is a contains six programs, each of which go for two months each, so it's a whole year, uh, again, in preparation for competition. Online training is now available, including my new program, Novice to Classic, a program geared towards beginners and novices looking at developing a classic physique, as well as Classic Cut, geared at those who wish to lose weight and gain muscle fast. Details available at www.goldenerabooken.com. Need a bodybuilding poster for your gym or office? Then check out ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com for the highest quality posters on the planet. Scroll through the galleries of all the legends, including greats such as Arnold, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, Tom Platts, and Larry Scott, and much, much more, and select your poster now. To support your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. I don't think that Bill Phillips looked at it as I want to compete against them. I want to destroy them. If they pass legislation basically making any type of food supplement a prescription item, that would be the end of death of the entire food supplement industry. In the 1960s, the sports supplement industry was barely emerging. I think the reason why Joe Weider was so successful was he had Arnold on his side. He wasn't selling supplements. He was in the dream business. Joe Weider was a marketing genius. People would say the promotions or the endorsements back then were cheesy. To me, it wasn't. I loved it. Fitness was taking off. You know, fitness became cool. You had a lot of readers that wanted to be like the stars that they idolized. Bill's strength 
this is marketing savvy. He's a marketing genius. Got it, got it. It's only Biden. The right of American citizens to have free access to dietary supplements of their choice. Consult your physician, you might as well consult the next guy you meet on the street. They don't know a damn thing about vitamins and nutrition. The dietary supplement industry became the number two most regulated industry. Nuclear, dietary supplements, pharmaceutical. We are more regulated than drugs. They come in and you uh, need to allow the FDA. They have jurisdiction. The enforcement is kind of the questionable side of it and how do they really get a handle on this monster? A lot of people tell me that the dietary supplement industry is completely unregulated. It's the wild, wild west out there. It's a free for all. That could not be further from the truth. A dietary supplement is not allowed to have a side effect. I always say the pharmaceutical has to have a minimum of 100 side effects in order for it to be a drug. And now, it's a $40 billion industry and growing. That's the really interesting thing, is the cast of characters from the 80s, when it was kind of iffy, to now, when it's a lot more legitimate. They made it sound cutting edge, revolutionary, and different, and I want that. That's cool. We are in this industry to improve our health. It's not just a vanity project here. We're working on our lifeline. We eat a certain way to improve our health. We train a certain way to improve our health. Supplements are just that. They supplement your work, your graft, your nutrition. Uh, they demonize dietary supplements, but they say all you need is real food. Well, what's a real food? They pump you up and get you hard, stronger, faster, bigger. Doc, I want to take this weight gain. I want to take this pre-workout. Doctors, no, no way. I, that stuff, we don't know what's in that. It could be, no way. I'm not going to give you, it's going to kill the industry, bottom line. So I must have drank so much protein powder from age 15 to 18 that my head was gonna explode. <laughs> I believed in metrics so much that I would probably punch somebody in the face if they tried to take it away from me.